I have made a proposal to the Iranian government that they sue the United States, Britain, and Israel at the International Court of Justice in The Hague uh, over this entire uh, nuclear reprocessing uh, dispute and demand an emergency hearing by the court and to get a the international equivalent of a temporary restraining order against the United States, Britain, and Israel to prevent a military attack, uh, a blockade, which is part of uh, a congressional resolution now being considered by the United States Congress, and any other measures of uh, economic, political, diplomatic uh, coercion against Iran by these three states or by the United Nations Security Council. There is a realistic possibility that the Bush administration and Israel will attack Iran between now and January 20th, 2009, when Bush leaves office. And the purpose of these lawsuits would be to disrupt that momentum. Uh, if you look at the momentum now, uh, it, it's very similar to the strategy taken by the Bush administration in the summer of 2002 in their run-up to the war uh, against Iraq. And somehow uh, this confrontation, this strategy, needs to be disrupted and uh, displaced, deflected into the International Court of Justice and out of uh, military conflict and confrontation. Uh, I think we still have um, time to act here. Uh, I don't know how much time, but we do have some time. Uh, based on prior experience, uh, Secretary of State Rice has just said that um, you don't do anything in August because everyone's on vacation. So probably this crisis will escalate in September. They will probably also feed it into supporting Senator McCain uh, in his, his re-election and then perhaps attack uh, after the uh, November uh, elections. At least my assessment, that seems to be the schedule. Um, I think we all know that war between the United States and Israel Britain on the one hand and Iran on the other uh, could be catastrophic. Uh, a British think tank has already estimated that a U.S. aerial attack on all Iranian nuclear sites uh, could kill up to 2.8 million uh, Iranians. This entire region uh, of the world would blow up. Uh, we have massive uh, warfare. Uh, Israel could also, as part of this attack, Hamas on the West Bank Hezbollah in Lebanon, and Syria as well. Um, so the, the consequences here would be cataclysmic. And so it's for that reason uh, I've made this proposal. Um, it is under consideration now uh, by the Iranian government. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do. A as of today, uh, a week ago, the United States government gave Iran a two-week ultimatum uh, to respond to basically their diktat on how this uh, nuclear reprocessing matter uh, should be handled. Uh, there is uh, a precedent here. Uh, back in early 1992, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the Bush senior administration started to blame Libya for the Lockerbie bombing uh, that happened um, back in uh, December of 1988, after spending years blaming other sources. Uh, very political uh, decision made there. And President Bush Sr. then sent the Sixth Fleet on hostile military maneuvers off the coast of Libya and actually had U.S. jet fighters penetrating into Libyan airspace 
in order to provoke the Libyans to a clash and a confrontation. Uh, at that time, we filed papers with the International Court of Justice in The Hague on behalf of Libya against the United States and the United Kingdom. Uh, we demanded an emergency hearing of the World Court and a uh, temporary restraining order against the United States and the United Kingdom prohibiting the threat and use of force. Uh, what happened in this case is that after we filed the papers and the court made it clear we were going to get our hearing, um, President Bush Sr. ordered the Sixth Fleet to stand down. Uh, they ended their hostile military maneuvers off the coast of Libya. Uh, the matter was submitted to the International Court of Justice. There were hearings, a lawsuit, a judgment, uh, and eventually that World Court judgment led to a peaceful negotiated solution of the Lockerbie dispute between the United States and Britain on one hand and Libya on the other. And today, there is normal diplomatic relations between these three countries. And obviously, there are differences, uh, but there are now constructive relations. Certainly, I would prefer a uh, diplomatic uh, settlement of this dispute. Uh, I think it can be done by the United States government engaging in good faith negotiations with Iran. Uh, even Brent Scowcroft and Zbigniew Brzezinski have recently stated that the United States should drop its ridiculous precondition that Iran must uh, suspend nuclear reprocessing, which is its right under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, before it would negotiate with Iran. The United Nations Charter clearly requires the peaceful settlement of international disputes and expressly requires by name negotiations. Right now there are no negotiations. Mr. Burns went over there uh, a week ago basically with a diktat followed by an ultimatum. These are not negotiations. We need negotiations exactly what the United States government is doing today with North Korea. Secretary Rice was just over in Singapore meeting with the foreign minister of North Korea. Um, if we can negotiate with North Korea that has already exploded what seems to have been a nuclear bomb and arguably has perhaps enough materials to have created eight or nine bombs, certainly we can negotiate in good faith and directly with Iran that has no nuclear weapon and indeed, even the International Atomic Energy Agency has certified that Iran has not diverted any nuclear material uh, to a nuclear weapons program. Likewise, our own national intelligence estimate by 16 U.S. intelligence agencies has stated Iran does not have a nuclear weapon and does not want have one for a while. So, it, if the United States government is not prepared to engage in reasonable, direct, unconditional, good faith negotiations with Iran. Uh, then my advice is the Iranian government go forward with these lawsuits. I've been a lawyer since uh, January 10, uh, 1977. And if someone isn't going to talk to you, you sue them. And then they have to talk to you. And indeed, it was during the course of the lawsuit, World Court lawsuit proceedings with Libya that the proceedings themselves were used to start negotiating a uh, peaceful resolution of that dispute uh, between the lawyers handling the lawsuit because there were no diplomatic relations uh, at that time between the United States, Britain, and Libya. So again, the same could happen here. Um, but we'll have to see uh, how this proceeds uh, in, in the next uh, week, uh, what, if any, response Iran makes uh, to the U.S. government's uh, Mr. Burns' uh, ultimatum. Um, but if the crisis escalates, 
certainly it would be my advice that Iran file these lawsuits against these three states, ask for an emergency hearing of the court, win these three orders, and then try to use those orders um, to, to prevent a war. The temporary restraining order would be to prevent a military attack on Iran, uh, to prevent any type of uh, blockade of Iran that is called for in this House resolution currently under consideration uh, today to prevent uh, the imposition of further economic sanctions by these three states uh, against Iran and also their pursuit of more sanctions against Iran at the United Nations Security Council, which Secretary of Rice said she's going to start to do in September uh, unless uh, Iran uh, succumbs to the diktat that uh, Mr. Burns gave them uh, a week ago. Well, you know, issuing diktats and ultimata is not a way to solve international disputes. Uh, it is a way to um, promote an international confrontation uh, and perhaps have it escalate into a crisis. Uh, it seems to me if you read the Iranian position as of um, recently, I'm not privy to whatever document uh, Mr. Jalili tendered in Geneva, but their previous response to the International Atomic Energy Agency, Iran indicated that although it would insist upon its rights under the NPT to engage in nuclear reprocessing on its own territory, Nevertheless, it would be prepared to have that nuclear reprocessing under the auspices of an international consortium. Now, certainly that, that could be negotiated in such a way as to uh, lend some degree of control of the reprocessing to the international consortium and also the question of transparency that everyone would know uh, that the uh, reprocessing there uh, stays at a level of reactor fuel, uh, which it currently is. Um, second, Iran has indicated that uh, it would be prepared to continue to observe the IAEA safeguard agreement that it does have and, and has complied with. And third, Iran has indicated uh, it would be prepared to accept the uh, additional IAEA protocol, uh, 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 protocol on inspections, SNAP protocol, and a more stringent regime of inspections uh, for its uh, nuclear reprocessing activities. It seems to me uh, that is a reasonable basis upon which negotiation should proceed. But if the United States government is not going to do that, um, then it seems to me Iran should sue them. Uh, at the World Court uh, and uh, uh, protect itself and then by means of the World Court proceedings force negotiations uh, which Iran can do as Libya did uh, before